Let's be honest, it wasn't like I was homeschooled or something. <laughs> my mom and dad passed on a really simple faith to me, one that consisted of a personal prayer life and just the understanding that God is the one who gets you through all the hard times. I guess to make a long story short, I lived a pretty normal life up until fifth grade, and then what happened next completely changed my life. My mom was receiving an anti-rejection drug so as to keep her body from rejecting the pancreas she had received a year prior. She ended up being allergic to the drug, and it sent her into anaphylactic shock, which chemically burnt her from the inside out, rendered her unconscious, and damaged many of her internal organs. She almost died. I still remember that day when they pulled me out of school, and after picking up my sister, we went to the hospital. I remember walking through the double doors on the 10th floor of the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, only to see my dad walking towards me with tears in his eyes, and shortly after embracing both me and my sister. I remember the doctor telling us that she really didn't have any chance of surviving. And when all things looked hopeless, my dad begged him for something to hold on to, some kind of number, some kind of hope. Obviously, at this point, the gravity of the situation had struck my little heart as a 10-year-old. And unknowingly, to cope with it, I put walls up around my heart, closing myself off so that I wouldn't have to deal with the pain of possibly losing my mother. I didn't realize that I had actually closed myself off to God, too. On a side note, she ended up miraculously living and is still alive today, even though she suffers a lot. This, brothers, marks the beginning of a slippery slope into a more difficult and sinful time of my life. For I'd begun living a very broken lifestyle, going all the way going into the summer before my senior year. One in which I worshipped the pagan gods of sports, women, and especially myself. To sum it all up, I was the center of the universe. Yet in all of this, I can see how God was constantly pouring out special graces into my heart so as to preserve me from the worst of sins. I attribute this greatly to the prayers of both of my mothers. That is, my earthly mother, who offered up her suffering for me, and my heavenly mother, who was constantly trying to catch me and swoop me up into her mantle, only for me to jump out and try to run away again. Luckily, both of my mothers are strong and stubborn women who really love their children. To fast forward a little bit, it was the summer going into my junior year of high school, and I met a beautiful and Catholic girl named Beverly Anna Bernadette Rose Wild. Coming from a solid Catholic family, she asked me to go on a Steubenville conference after just knowing each other for a couple of weeks. Of course, I had to stop and discern the situation to see whether or not I should go. So I thought to myself, she's beautiful, she's single, she'll be really impressed. Of course I'll go. <laughs> now, not too much happened for me on that conference spiritually, besides the stirring up of a little fervor that caused me to read Rediscovering Catholicism by Matthew Kelly. But after about a week of being jacked and trying to be the best version of myself, that fervor quickly died out. But at least I had a new girlfriend. <laughs> we ended up dating until, you know, with enough time, for with long enough so that I could sign up for the next Steubenville conference, uh, which after we broke up, I decided I'd still go on since it happened to be in San Diego, California. <laughs> it was on this conference that the Lord made me aware of how closed off my heart had been to him for a number of years. It was at this conference that I received a deep interior conviction of how empty my life had been up until then and how it needed to change. I began to pray and ask the Lord to open up my heart, to take down those walls and help me to receive his love and also to help me to love him as he deserves to be loved. I remember upon arrival at home, I was getting off the bus, and I had a number of new, number of new um, resolutions for my life, including the making of a daily holy hour. So I showed up every day, only to have my heart melted in front of the radiant love of our Lord's Eucharistic presence. 
I began to become more and more aware of his divine and hidden presence in the Eucharist, so much so that I started going to daily Mass. And it was with the frequenting of the sacraments of the Eucharist and confession that my heart was completely transformed in Christ. And a new beginning to my life started. I completely changed. This fervor only increased throughout my senior year of high school as I stopped dating completely so as to be alone with the Lord. And as I reflected more and more on Christ crucified, I realized the absolute raw and intense love with which he loved us when he died. I desired nothing more in life than to love him back in that same way, to lay down my life for him. This enkindled in my heart desires to become a religious or a priest, so as to give my life totally to him. But after visiting a religious order and calling the CFRs and talking to them for a while about discernment, I realized quickly that religious orders typically want you to have some kind of college under your belt before you join, or in their case, your cincture. So Father Kazuski, my spiritual director at the time, told me I should go to SJV and discern both. Trusting his advice, I joined the seminary and have since been blessed with innumerable blessings, healing, growth, study, a fraternity I had never thought possible, and a very deep understanding of God's love for me as his beloved son. I've changed a lot in my time here and will always cherish the gift these years have been. Though I do not know where the Lord may call me in the end, I know that as long as I can lay down my life for him in a complete and radical way, I'll love it. I'd like to recite some of the words of Psalm 16 that have been speaking to my heart. You alone are my portion and cup. You alone are my prize. The lot marked out for me is my delight. Welcome indeed the heritage that falls to me. So in closing, I encourage you, brothers, Pray that your hearts will be truly open to whatever it is the Lord desires for your life. For in the end, he alone is our prize. Praise be Jesus Christ.